Yo, would that lose you, Meg? I'm I just occasionally become a gray square. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on with this? <laughs> Welcome back, um, everyone, to another episode of Slice. Uh, I am your host, Nick Wan. Hello, everybody. I'm Meg Rizdahl. I'm your second co-host for Sliced. Yeah, and we are ready to yeah share what Sliced is all about. Sliced is competitive live coding data scientist. Our four contestants today have two hours with a data set that they've only just seen just this moment. Uh, to uh, train a machine learning model, submit predictions, and create data visualizations that impress us um, at the end of two hours. Nick and I and chat will be judging. Um, so our contestants will get points, not just for the model, which is 35 points, um, but also chat will have a, a, a say in who earns the most points tonight. Let's take a look at the contestants tonight, y'all. My name is Julia Silgi. I'm a data scientist and software engineer at um, R Studio. Hey, I'm Tony Elhover, and I program, and I suck at it. And I watch Nick, and he's awful. Josh Paul Campart, data scientist, Boston Bruins. My name is Jordan Wilheim, and I'm a data scientist. The nice part about these four contestants is, like, all four of them are, like, I don't know, rock stars in their own rights, you know? All right, Meg, you ready? Oh, I think so. Yeah, oh. let's do this. All right, y'all, it is hands-on keyboard time. Just let our contestants know that they can begin coding. So hopefully we start to see some cursor movement, I guess. And Julia, you know, the thing that scares me the most about Knit, if it crashes, you know, you know, what a flex when you're importing <laughs> Silgi lib. <laughs> that is a flex. What a flex. <laughs> what a flex. <laughs> That's pretty outstanding. That's what pretty outstanding. I will say we've got Tony. I think he mentioned he may be using, you know, a few tools outside of, you know, our studio, which we saw him use in the pilot. Um, I see he's got, he does have Excel open. I don't know if this is its there. own meme, though. You know, we don't know, like, Tony <laughs> truly is the, the the wild card. We don't know if he's joking around or if he's actually going to be going into Excel and doing some Excel stuff. Let's go over to Jordan. Jordan being um, our Python person tonight, and he has brought in all sorts of stuff. And also look at the seed. Uh, we're going with Leet here. Uh, let's go over to Josh. Already uh, uh, slicing through, in importing things. I, I don't know if this is like a confusing thing or not, but console on the right side? has a little bit of a different setup from what I'm used to seeing um, with the, the, yeah, I usually have like the plots and documentation, et cetera, on the lower right. Pretty default, though, um, for me. And we see here uh, Jordan, again, the, our Python user, he'll be, it seems like he'll be plotting things in Plotly tonight, and this is a very wide one bar, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you what our contestants are up against today, um, they will be predicting whether an aircraft strike with wildlife causes damage. And there's a bunch of different sort of like metadata about region and airline and and so on uh, that they'll be using to construct their models. So here's Tony's screen. Uh, and Tony also doing some data visualization. His plot here, uh, engines are correlated, but who cares? <laughs> True. Tony, also, what is this font that we're seeing from- Yeah, it's so from... beautiful, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine coding in, in a font that's cursive? Yeah, it like almost looks like it's a mix of like cursive and like monospace, sort of. Uh, <laughs> Some fun facts that we learned about Tony from last, from the pilot season. Tony didn't use tab complete. Right. Yeah. Maniac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who uses a, a full featured IDE like our studio, but doesn't use a basic <laughs> feature of an IDE like tab complete? Yeah. yeah. He never used impressive is a word for it, or yeah, maniacal is another word for it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jordan is plotting. Uh, if you're in Python, this is a very typical uh, seaborne heat map that we've seen. We saw Kansi use it last week. We saw Scott Cole use it last week. Uh, so a seaborne heat map, just looking for correlating features. Jordan here tried to jab out a lambda function and then apply. He does get it. Uh, Ooh, we've 
got a time series plot from Tony. Really? Just, yeah. Um, we do. Our pilots getting better at their jobs. Um, over, I guess, at, over year. Over, yeah, this is over time. Yes. Yes. Um, so that would be, I believe, our first golden feature discovered by Tony. Wow. Um, the time series plot's worth five points. So Tony already has five points to his name. Cl clap, claps in chat uh, over here on Julia's screen. Uh, she's using something I have never seen, which is apply rose algorithm. Uh, do you have any idea what this might be, Meg? I have no idea. Um, I wonder if she's doing, is it some kind of like imputation uh, that she's doing? Um, I'm just looking at the documentation that's literally on her screen. Creates a specification of a recipe step that generates a sample of synthetic data by enlarging the feature space of, a, of minority and majority class example. Currently on Josh's screen right now. And um, Josh is using an XGBoost model. Uh, he looks like he is doing what? Uh, a different type of grid search that I haven't seen before. Uh, there are uh, grid search, a lot of people out there, uh, when they hear the term grid search, or they hear the term uh, hyperparameter tuning, um, a lot of the time, especially those who are just getting into uh, modeling and predictions, uh, they think it's just one thing. Uh, but there are so many different forms and ways and names uh, to do grid search. Uh, so, uh, we are seeing another flavor of grid search here from Josh. I do see a little comment in here. Helicopters no barrel roll. Uh, <laughs> so doing his uh, doing his best to uh, win the hearts and minds of chat. Julia Silgi oh, here. Cool. It looks like she is ready for preds. Watch out for those unknown medium birds, Meg. That's right. That's right. Oh wow, yeah. Watch out for unknown medium bird. Um. <laughs> Huh. What what kind of um Yeah, what size is a medium bird? Is it like a duck? I think of like a songbird as like a small bird tiny. and like a goose or like eagle or something as a large bird. Isn't a duck like similar size to an eagle? I think is... they're smaller. Ducks are way smaller than eagles. This is me outing myself as someone who knows nothing about birds. I'm going to get canceled by bird Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Maya Higa. So on Julia's screen, she does have a submission up there. Uh, it looks like she might be just, I don't know. Like, I i feel like she's searching for something and I don't necessarily know what, Meg. Yeah, this isn't doom scrolling, is it? <laughs> I, I feel like, I mean, she's, this is the second time she's copied and pasted something into this R yep. markdown cell. Uh, yep. This is also the second time she's, you know, done some renaming of variables and factors. Uh, we have seen Jordan do two different things. Uh, we saw him dabbling in some Seaborn, and we also saw him pull out the Plotly for interactive graphs. Maybe he was trying to find a golden feature there. He did try Shap and he failed doing it. This is exactly what I thought, because lots of data and a tree model or a gradient boosted model you don't have a lot of time to work with and so i'm guessing he gave up after you know a minute or two um but uh we do see jordan here in a collab environment doing python uh and again he he was one of the first to submit uh public leaderboard had him uh, pretty high we'll see if that's where he ends up at the end of the night uh, we haven't seen plots like this in the competition no. quite yet and i think this does do a pretty good job at explaining uh the story behind the data and and this it is something does we haven't seen this before uh i think taylor Tony... coordinates i don't know but yeah i think it's it's cool um bonus points for taylor swift t swizzle man we <laughs> have uh 30 minutes left here and uh we are going to start seeing things pick up in terms of coding uh, people who have maybe been behind in terms of data visualization like Josh has is now throwing things in there like engine type and plotting some very, very default base R plots here. Yes. Uh, Actually, this is ggplot base, base uh, colors. Yes. So. Yep. Behave. Is that a little pun there? <laughs> engine type B. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just want to make sure we captured that. That's nice. Um, that is nice, Josh. Back to Tony with this very interesting bee swarm violin plot looking ooh. thing. Right. Bee swarm is, uh, yeah, greater than violin plot. Uh, yeah. cute. This is, uh, <laughs> what are what are we even looking at right now? I again, I think this is—he's just looking at our yeah the um, predicted pro- probabilities. It looks like Julia is full send right now into modeling. She is quite literally looking at her different tunes. She's went through uh, a grid search here, and she is literally looking at her different modeling parameters. If you're unfamiliar with hyperparameter tuning is, think about it like tuning a guitar, tuning an instrument. Uh, you don't, you have a set of strings on it, you play through it, it sounds kind of gross. Uh, you start tweaking the knobs one by one and it starts sounding more and more in tune, more and more pretty, more and more exactly what you want it to be. We've just got five minutes remaining uh, on the second episode of our first summer season of sliced um josh typing down here i'm dying to make these predictions he's in he's in a run he's actually in a run Ooh, ooh, rough Uh uh-oh this happened this happened before he is in an xg boost tune model literally model fit model predict is where he's at right now uh less than four minutes to go uh he (laughs) is circling his screen with his cursor uh, Ooh. very, very stressful wait for Josh right now. Error in my formats, I think, in the holdout. Uh, does Ooh. that mean he's caught something in the final hour? It is pencils down now. Pencils down. Uh, All right, so I've let our contestants know that they should stop coding and make no more submissions. They do have the option to pick what they believe is their best submission. This was maybe the closest in terms of both, like, skill on the modeling mm-hmm. side and skill on the data visualization side that we've had ever. Looks like Julia runs away with this one. 49% of the chat votes. Julia is the one who gets 20 points tonight. Uh, total scores so far this episode. Uh, Julia with 20 points from chat uh, and Tony with five points from a golden feature. Josh with five points from the same golden feature and Jordan with zero points so far. Okay, so the way it works, chat, we'll go name by name. Uh, There are 15 points to give from Meg and 15 points to give from me, and it's distributed. So let's write down our scores for Josh. Three, two, one. Oh! Can you see my... Yeah, me and Meg both with six. He, you know, went for volume, and I think he went for quality, And he, you know, with each of his plots, shared some sort of, like, insight about the data. All right, so next is Jordan. I think I'm, I think I'm ready. All right, three, two, one. I feel like it was still pretty heavy on the modeling side of data visualization. Um, I thought a lot of it was diagnostic. Uh, I, I always want to see a little more storytelling in the data visualization and a little more creativity as well. Let's go with Tony now. Three, two, one. All right, why why three? We saw he did a bunch of stuff with predicted probability distributions. He did the goofy, funny bee swarm, um, but maybe not as much of things that were, um, you know, apart from maybe the predicted probability distribution, helpful in uh, modeling or actually providing like insights and storytelling about the data. Last but not least, Julia Silgi. Okay, three. Two, one. Why two, Meg? As we kind of noted, Sliced is all about where you decide as a contestant that you want to invest your resources. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we just didn't see Julia um, spending a lot of time on data visualization um, in comparison to what I think was like our strongest field of contestants um, ever when it came to data visualization. Um, So we have modeling. uh, which is 35 points uh, to the winner of the modeling portion. This is 35 points. Literally, whoever gets the modeling wins. That's literally where we are. It's the closest we've seen in this scoring basically ever. So uh, whoever gets this wins. So we're starting with Josh Polkamp Hart, 2.767. Next, Jordan Wilhelm, 0. 0.2. 
to 1195. So score to beat is 0.2, okay? This is Tony. 0.3. Okay. This is Julia Silge. If uh, Julia beats 0.2, she wins. If she doesn't, Jordan wins. Julia scores 0. Point, this, this is shocking. 0. 0.47746. So that means Jordan Wilhelm, yet again, he called his shot. Uh, modeling was his game. He wins tonight's game with 35 Jordan. points for modeling. Julia Silgi, uh, second place, 24 points. Third place, Josh with 17, and uh, fourth place, Tony, 13 points. Uh, Jordan Wilhelm, 41 points tonight, going home as night two sliced winner. Congrats, Jordan. Uh, hearts in chat, claps in chat for Jordan Wilhelm, data dude in chat. Congratulations. Just incredible. Tonight was absolutely so razor thin, even though the scores might sound like... This is a hard challenge. This, this is a hard data set. <laughs> this was so close. You, this was literally, this is, I don't know if there's going to be a closer one. Thank you, Meg, for co-hosting. And uh, thanks to Streamlit. Thanks to our studio for sponsoring. Uh, thanks to our contestants, all four contestants. They literally were so, so close. Uh, you, you could do that 10 times. And you're going to get a different winner every time. I swear it. That's uh, right. That's right. That's so close. Uh, I'll see y'all next week, okay? Have a good night.